everybody, welcome back. It's a new day. I'm refreshed. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Don't hit me with the, the smoke today. Don't start me with the smoke. Give me so. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we got... This is great stats. K8NW6HR9. Might as well take Broken Magnet. Um, compared to... The runs we started with yesterday, which I, we, we don't need to live in the past, okay? But 4 HP, great rate of fire, great damage, uh, a spacebar item that has some uh, some merit associated with it, although we'll probably replace it immediately. Yeah, I mean, Book of the Dead is just better. Oh, it feels good. It feels good. I'm glad we didn't have to finish yesterday on a, uh, on a negative note. Losing a winnable run, but we are back today. You might say, NL, I'm excited because you've gone one video without bantering. You must have a lot of banter stored up. Wrong. <laughs> Still not really going outside. I will say I had a laugh today, and I apologize because this is at uh, other people's expense. But so are a lot of the best jokes. Look, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy a joke that's a little bit, uh, you know, harmless and innocuous. A joke that's just clever and, you know, doesn't offend anybody. You know, nobody feels like they're the, uh, the butt of the joke. But at the same time, sometimes it's also... It, here's the thing, okay, with jokes. If somebody's being a jerk, you can mock them a little bit. For the purposes of, of bettering uh, humanity. That's my, that's my two cents on, on the subject of uh, making a joke at somebody's expense. So in this case, I was laughing because uh, Indie Mouse, you know, are you, you familiar with Indie Mouse? He's a YouTube superstar. Um, few people know this. Indie Mouse was just a... Uh, previously in another life was just an Australian kid, really who was a big fan of our content and then said, please, can I make some intros for you? And I said, ah, go away from here, kid. I ain't got time for this. I'm a big shot professional YouTuber. And he said, okay, sure. But then he made me the intros anyway, and they were awesome. And then uh, yada, 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 I don't know what happened. But now he's got like 500,000 subs on YouTube. I'm not saying it was entirely our doing, but... Uh or as a result of the influence that, that that we had. In fact, we really didn't do... I mean, literally didn't do anything at all. Um, but at the same time... Where am I going with this? I don't know. Uh, Indie Mouse was, was tweeting, as he is wont to do now, uh, about the Cyberpunk delay. You know, you, you familiar with Cyberpunk 27? Uh, 20, <laughs> Cyberpunk 27! You missed the first 26, don't miss this one. It's truly next-gen. Um... Cyberpunk 2077, you know, it's the the new CD Projekt Red game. Um, it got delayed. It has been delayed before. I don't know, it was originally supposed to come out in like 2015 or something. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think it was originally supposed to come out in like when it's ready. And then they were like, it's going to be March 2020. And then, you know, 2020 happened and also delays happened no matter what. Um, okay, so just chill out a little bit here. We, we don't need to risk our whole life just to play this demon judgment just yet um and they delayed it until uh i think they delayed it until july and then today they were like we're not gonna make the july release date we're gonna wait till september okay there was a reply um that that has been both supported and dunked on but put me on the dunked on side a little bit that said i am canceling my pre-order and I will never support any products you make ever again. And Indie Mouse, you know, tweeted that and was like, "We look at this entitled take. Look, it's not the way that I choose to handle myself on social media most of the time. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie. I looked at it and did laugh a little bit. But then I went uh, a little deeper into the comments and was was losing my mind at some of the nuclear level takes that were in there. One guy said, it's like they don't know how bad 2020 has been. I wonder how many people won't even be alive to play Cyberpunk 2077 when it comes out. Are the gamers okay? 
I mean, I, I have to, because somebody's going to say it if I don't say it. Literally, there will be people who die between September and October before Cyberpunk 2077 comes out. And realistically, oh, come on. Come on, you're going to hit me with that? Realistically, at least, a, you know, a very, very small percentage of them, because most of these people, um, you know, would be over the age of 65 and perhaps not that interested in the game to begin with, um, or, you know, live in other parts of the world that, you know, are not own a gaming PC, you know? You're, you're cutting the population slice pretty thin there. Um, so there are literally, like, uh, a few people, but, like, what do you, wh like, what's your point? Maybe they should have released it uh, back when they came up with the idea for the game, because it would have been the peak number of consumers that would be alive. To li it's like one of it, it's the the king example of like you're you're right, but for no reason whatsoever. Like what's I'm I'm trying to figure out what the actionable piece of criticism is there. Just release it when it's broken. Also, like uh, and, and don't let I, look. I've, there's been situations where people are like, you know, oh, I you know have a illness and I just want to live until the new Star Wars or the new Marvel movie or whatever comes out. Right? Fair enough. But like, if you're not in that boat, then it's not your business, you know? <laughs> I, I, I'm being a little careful with the way I'm, I'm treading on this one. Hold on. I'm, dude, this is, a, this is a weird one. You got something. For, you don't have anything for me? But like, I'm, I'm still just trying to, to fathom what, what this man is talking about when he says, wait, like, what's your point? Even if they released it tomorrow instead of today, you got the same concern, you know? Dude, I am I am stunned that this demon judgment might not pay out. We actually lost more HP than I'd like here. First off, I mean, you know, if you're watching this video, you should never be upset about a g well, you you can be annoyed. Let's let's be realistic, right? You can be annoyed about a game being delayed, but you should never be upset. If anything, um, you should be stoked that the publisher had a decision to make between releasing it early and, you know, probably reaping uh, profits early, you know, and, and waiting a little bit longer and releasing a product that's a little bit better. Or maybe even a lot better. You know, there... The number one thing you should be annoyed by... Is, is dangerous, but I'm gonna do it. Okay. Is a... Uh, Please, is a publisher releasing a game before it's ready? We should not have gone so deep on this, but... Um, but then secondarily, I'm trying to get over the nuclear... I, I, I haven't even stated my point clearly. I'm trying to get over the nuclear level take that is like, how dare CD Projekt Red delay their game? Don't they know we're in the middle of a pandemic? Full stop. I'm, I'm kind of losing it. Get me out of here. Um, we're, this is spicier than it should be, but we have amazing stats and should be completely fine. I'm just slightly nervous because of the situation I put myself in, but that's okay. Anyway, the threat is a gold mine. Like, I just, uh... People in the comments are like... And they, who knows, maybe Egg will be on my face if this incredibly unlikely event happens. But, um... One dude in the comments is like, hey, don't be that upset that they delayed it. They delayed it so that they could make it better. And then somebody replied, yeah, but now that they've delayed it twice, who's to say they're not just going to cancel it outright? What are you talking about? Does... You, you, like, do you... Know, I, I can't... It, the, the take is such a nuclear level galaxy brain, I can't respond. That's I'm, I'm stumbling over myself. Hey, what if this greedy company just didn't release a product, you know? That, to own us. I don't understand. Anyway, we don't need to talk about it. I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm just confused. It's two months. Look, I'm not saying you shouldn't be slightly annoyed by the delay, but I'm, it's it's 60, it's a 60-day delay. Thought maybe we could explosivo this. Just Just chill out. You got other games? 
I'm not telling you, you know, oh, why are you being upset? It's just a video game. Although I will say, I, like, many different situations ran through my head where I was like, you know, the doctor told me I only had three months to live and, you know, but at least I'll get to play Cyberpunk and then CD Projekt Red tweets that and I'm like, no! How I'll never buy one of your products ever again. I don't know. Of all the things to be mad about in the gaming industry, I, I, you know, I've said it before, I think some are valid, I think some are less valid, to be honest. Um, the least valid is probably being genuinely mad at a publisher over a delay. If you want to be like, ah, oh, man, my vacation time was uh, gonna line up perfectly and now it doesn't. That's, you know, you can be, you can be personally upset, of course. I get personally upset over a lot of things I would never, you know, harass a, a company over. Oh, the restaurant I wanted to go to was full. Now I gotta go someplace else. It is what it is. That's that's my own problem. I don't tweet the restaurant and go, I was, you're my favorite restaurant, but you didn't have any open tables today. I'm never coming back. I go, you know what? Now we gotta show up at 5.15, because if you show up at 5.30, you're gonna have to wait. Let me in. All right, dude. We this we got big recovery here. Just why are you so mad? I'm <laughs> just. <laughs> I I expected, and there were a lot of people dunking on this guy who I don't know might be a child. Um, but there were also a lot of people who were like, other people don't get it, King. I support you, and I'm like, why? It doesn't make any sense. Regardless, though. Anyway, so that that's my only that's my only bit of banter from this morning. A plain play to Isaac with a little bit of banter. How are we looking here? Um, we are looking a uh, good. Don't get me wrong, but there's uh, not much reason to explore the rest of this floor except maybe to pog out of our minds with the Book of the Dead. That's my two cents. Everything's going real nicely. The HP got us back to a good level, and, you know, we, we made a couple, I would call them relatively small mistakes earlier in this run, but it's it's definitely come together faster than uh, yesterday's or the day before's even. Really, I would just say, um, I, I, I think I might have to go with the nuclear option. I'm going to tweet at pills and say I am never taking you or your products ever again I'm canceling my button press I don't know I resent that kind of reasoning as well or not reasoning but like discourse like you would tweet a company and be like look here's the thing this is a, and I can't believe I'm still talking about this, but I can't find any other conversational thread to pull on, okay? So just have mercy! I don't know if anybody actually, like, believes that a delay makes a game worse. If anything, it could be a symptom of a game being bad if it gets delayed a lot. Like, let me put it this way. When Duke Nukem Forever got delayed, you know, I don't know, in 2001 or whenever it was originally supposed to come out, you know, you could be like, that's alright, they're just gonna make the best game they could possibly make, and it's, you know... It, a delay is good. I would rather play a good game when it's finished than play a bad game that's rushed and is bad forever. Then when Duke Nukem Forever got delayed um, for the 900th time in 2010, uh, I feel like nobody on planet Earth reasonably expected that to be good. It's not like that. That's just a situation where it's gone on too long. If, if, if Cyberpunk is delayed from... July to September 2020, and then they're like, actually, we're coming out quarter one 2022. I'd be like, ooh, I'm starting to get a little concerned. <laughs> That's a big change, but, you know, in all likelihood, they, they're delaying it to make it better. To tweet the company and be like, hey, thanks for your customer-facing decision. By the way, I hate you, is, is very... You know, you're, you're dampening the whole industry when you do that. But I hope that the community manager just laughed when they saw it. Regardless. They're gonna buy it. You've seen it. 
the picture of like boycott COD because there's no dedicated servers on PC is a Steam group, and then like on the day of COD's launch, everybody uh, in the Steam group was playing the new Call of Duty anyway. And I mean, like being mad about no dedicated servers is is way more sensible than being mad about a delay. As you, I mean, I, don't, I feel weird about even talking about this because it's like I'm a grown man. <laughs> So, and I am like, I, I feel like when I talk about it, everybody that's listening is like, we know, we know this is stupid, we're not 12 years old. So, you know, we can move on, that's fine. Um, IV Bag has, has allowed me to get a little spicy recently. Let's not get too spicy. Let, let's stop it right there. It gives us a decent amount of purchasing power. But this is what happens when I'm not allowed to go outside and get grocery store anecdotes, you know? I'm, I'm, uh... I'm, I'm adrift conversationally. What, I, what I've lost in muscle tone by not being able to go to a proper gym for the past, like, four months, I have, uh, whoop, let's go. Uh, I have gained in conversational muscle from training in the hyperbaric time chamber where there's no anecdotes, but I gotta talk to myself for four hours a day. We're figuring it out. I'm learning a lot about myself during this difficult time. Can I tell you, we made, and it, I'm not trying to get culinary flex, you know, this is not a culinary flex. I hate sometimes, and I actually, when I say that I hate this, I do want to let you know that what I'm about to say sounds like I'm annoyed with Malf when he does this, but actually I love when Malf does this because it's very in character for him. And he's earned it, he's put in the time in the trenches. So I'm not insulting, I'm waving my finger like Bernie Sanders right here. I'm not insulting my good friend Malf. Some of my colleagues bake their own bread. Oh my god. The universe is collapsing. Okay, I told you I couldn't stay away. Just like the guy who, who wouldn't stop pre-ordering. I'm still taking those pills. Um, but uh, I, I hate when you tell someone, and this, this is a common experience I'm sure that you've had happen. You tell someone you cook something, and then they start asking you the gatekeeping questions. Which are probably just motivated by curiosity, but my innate distrust of every single human being on the planet has me thinking that they're trying to, like, you know, devalue my contribution, right? Um, so you'll say something like, oh, I made, uh, homemade tacos last night. And they go, oh, really? That sounds delicious. They always hit you with, like, the, that sounds good. Then they'll hit you with something absurd. Did you make your own tortillas? And you go, no, we used, like, you know, some tortillas we got from the store. And then they, it, that's the cue for them to go off, you know? Oh, really? That's cool. Like, store-bought tortillas can be okay, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to make your own tortillas. All you have to do is uh, go to your supermarket, and then you're going to buy some masa, which is corn flour. And then you're going to take the masa, you're going to mix it with, like, an equal amount of water. And then with an equal amount of water, you're just going to, you're not really going to knead it, but you're just going to kind of work with it with your hands until it makes kind of, like, a goopy... A uh, sort of pancakey sort of dough, and then you're gonna take like a ladle of it, and you're gonna put it in a, a, a on a hot skillet, and you really only have to cook it for like I don't know, maybe like a, a minute per side, maybe even a little bit less, and then you got your fresh tortillas, and you're like, I just wanted to tell you about dinner, but go off, I guess. So you know, last night I uh... oh, and you didn't even make your own salsa. I make my own salsa with the tomatoes that I grow from my garden. Oh, and uh, you know, if you really want to try it, why, why don't you uh, get your own mango tree and then you can make mango salsa. Oh, I would never buy it from the supermarket. No, absolutely not. I would rather grow my own mangoes and buy my own fertilizer for the soil. I know mangoes don't normally grow in the frigid north climate of Canada. That's why I built my own greenhouse and I'm growing hydroponic mangoes specifically so I can uh, feel good about the salsa I make with my own tortilla chips. Takes 300,000 liters of water to create the salsa, but that's okay. I, you know, it's just, there's nothing like homemade. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going off a little bit, but, um, you know, as part of our, like, meal prep situation, um, we made homemade pizza last night, and it was delicious. I walked into the fire. That's a recurring theme. Um, it was delicious. No, we did not make our own pizza dough. Yeah, I know. It's easy. All you gotta do to make your own pizza dough is uh, invent the universe and then... You know, it's really not that hard. Um, <laughs> no, they included some... Uh, some flatbread. And then you just, you know, you broil it to make sure it gets a little crispy on the bottom. And then you flip it over. And then you put, you know, some tomato sauce. And they gave us... Uh, 
pulled pork. We put some pulled pork on it. Some poblano peppers. And I'll say we flexed a little bit. We have some arugula in our garden. We ripped off some of that arugula, put it on the pizza. Absolutely did not change the flavor at all, but made the presentation slightly better. Oh, you should really try it sometime. Oh, you can't use store-bought arugula. It's totally different. It doesn't have the same kind of peppery undertones. It was delicious. That's, that's all I got. I w it was one, and I've talked ad nauseum about uh, the fact that every meal prep service has the same problem, which is we, we get it for convenience. Um, I shouldn't call it meal prep because it really sounds like they're cooking it for you, but you know, I'm, you know what I mean, like the Blue Apron HelloFresh style stuff. Um, are we, we're on Dank Devs XL? Are we, are we prepared? Are we ready for this? I don't know. I think we are. Um, but we got it for convenience. Pe different people get it for different things. Some people get it because they're like, uh, you know, I, uh, I want to experiment with new cooking stuff, uh, but I don't want to act actually, uh, you know, find my own recipes or something like that. Some people is just convenient. For us, it's convenient, but there, there is an inconvenience, which is that uh, sometimes you want a meal that, uh, you know, is cookable in 20 to 30 minutes. And they say, don't worry, it's a 30 minute meal. And then when you start making it, you're like, this is not a 30 minute meal. One of the steps is cook it in the oven for 25 minutes and there's eight other steps. How could this be 30 minutes? The, the answer is because you do some of the tasks in parallel. But, you know, in principle, I'm still upset. <laughs> All right. So we are going to get a deal with the devil. Forgive me for what I'm about to say, because I say it a lot. This run is extremely good. However, the the one real concern I have right now is HP. And I think it's justifiable. We're in a good spot on HP, but we're not too far away from being a little scared. Anyway, let, let's get back to the banter. I just wanted to check in on how the Isaac run is going. Uh, both Kate and I know how to cook. We I, I cooked a lot in in college, and you know Kate's just she's a good cook. I don't know I don't know where she learned it. Just experience, I suppose. I never really inquired. How dare you? How dare you step on me? I think we want the pact, and we don't want little brim. I think the HP is a little bit more important right now. But but still, you know. Really, I guess what it comes down to is that it's a very expensive grocery delivery service. I can't in good conscience... I, I don't really... Every single one of these services that I've ever used is essentially on the exact borderline of being recommendable. There's gotta be a Tinted Rock in here. No Tinted Rock. Which is not to say that they're bad, but is rather just to say... That it's not something where I would be like, it's going to change your life. I think, and, and it's weird, because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, if you don't know how to cook, like, maybe you don't have a repertoire of, like, you know, five meals that you know how to make and you can rotate and, and be happy. Um, then then maybe you'd be interested. But I honestly think that if you, if you lack the uh, fundamental cooking skills, like you've never learned how to cook, you would be annoyed with a lot of the stuff that you'd make with this. You'd be like, I don't know how to make a chiffonade. <laughs> If you know how to cook, you're probably going to be a little annoyed because you're like, A, I'm spending a lot of money on this when I could have just bought the ingredients myself, and B, this is taking way more time. Like every single, my, my principal problem with it is that every single meal, even if it's like a ham sandwich, is like, they never let you make a, a simple ham sandwich because I guess they're, you know, trying to justify the, the price point, so they, they fancy it up a lot. Um, but sometimes you're like, dude, I just wanted like a, a meal I could cook in, in 10 or 20 minutes. Which thankfully was what the pizza ended up being. But, um, you know, instead it's never just like, you know, put, put the ham on the bread and then, you know, serve it. This is just an example for the record. Obviously, I hope. Uh, instead, it ends up being like, you know, uh, and then you're going to make your own spicy Dijonese. Take the mustard seeds that we provided, go buy a mortar and pestle, grind up the mustard seeds, and then add... I don't even know what Dijon is, but I know it's a place in France, but apart from that, I do not know. Um, I'm going to walk back one room here. 
Because I, I do think... I don't think we should be afraid. You know what? I'll spend a key. If necessary. I don't think we should be afraid of this run right now. But I do think we should take our time, if possible, to maybe... I mean, first off, just getting this trinket is helpful. But finding a second secret room would be beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be beautiful. There we go. Okay, so three bombs. Not a bad price. Do we know any of these? Okay, we got a luck upgrade. Paralysis, Paralysis is not a big deal in a... Yeah, I'm taking them. Okay, a tears upgrade. A lemon party. And the telepills that is going to have me doing most of the rest of this floor. But you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Being forced to interface with, with the floor a little bit more. And, and probably picking up some more consumables as a result. This might be wise. Or lucky. Because I it, well, there was no wisdom associated with it. <laughs> it was a complete accident. Uh, Book of the Dead is, is better than fine. It's great. But Stroop the Whoop is better than great. It's superb. I will say I'm I'm in bad Isaac form. We or may, maybe this run has just been deceptive in the sense that it started with HP and then you know we did get some more throughout the run, but not as much as maybe we normally expect, especially from like a shop perspective because of the the two curses of the whatever. Yo, health down is a great pill to hold. Um, the two uh, curse of the XL is that what it's called? Is it really called curse of the XL? There's no way, right? It's, it's got to be called, like, Curse of Gargantua. <laughs> Maybe that's substantially worse. Okay, we got another luck upgrade. We do have eight luck. <laughs> All right. So we know that that pill uh, is what it is. You know what? Just give me this. Don't disbelieve the question marks anymore. Anyway. But anyway, the, the long and the short of that 10-minute story is that the pizza we had last night was quite good. I'm thinking about it right now. Like a Frank Ocean song. Today is Thursday. Thursdays are um, Thursdays are highly variable days in terms of like how fast they go by for me. I do a lot of work on Thursdays. You know, it's... I got my... Minimum, my stream. Kate's co-op stream. And uh, we used to do Check the Wire on Thursdays, but now that's a Friday, Marty. Send me, please. Um, but really, it, 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 we're going to record some more videos, as you can clearly see, based on the fact that you're listening to this right now. Um, <clears throat> hold on. We got to... It's weird because, like, focusing sometimes is actually bad or counterintuitive, but I, I think we got to pay a little bit more attention to this run just to ensure it doesn't slide off into oblivion. It really should not... But, like, our burn rate of HP is just slightly too high. I'd really... Even just seeing, like, one spirit heart would go a long way. But what I was going to say to finish off that bit, which is not a bit at all, actually, but... Um, is... Uh, Thursdays have been going by... Mighty fast. That could be really useful there. Um, because on Kate Stream, we've been playing Clubhouse games. And I gotta tell you, three hours goes by uh, in a heartbeat when you're playing that game. At least if you're playing it, you know, with the with a friend. Online, I might throw my controller through the through the monitor, but... I've been trying to learn how to play Richie Mahjong. It's, it's an uphill battle. <laughs> if you've... <laughs> If you've never played Richie Mahjong, I, I'm getting into it because Kate's been playing a lot of it and she's like, it's a really cool and fun game. So I, I was like, you know what, I'll give it a try. And I'm, you know, I've been around the block enough times to know that just because you don't like a game, you know, immediately because it's like you're not grasping it because the rules are complicated, that doesn't mean that it's not for you, you know, it just means that um, it might take you a little bit more time to learn the fundamentals. Why did I look for a secret room in that situation? It's a great question. Um, but man, there is a... 
There's a lot to learn in that game. It is, it's enough that I'm, like, as I'm playing it, I keep looking to Kate and being like, there's people that play this in real life. Like, not, not that they wouldn't have fun with it, but I'm just amazed that a non-computer entity could calculate score. Sincerely. Like, I'm playing the game, I need to refer to this reference sheet every two seconds to be like, oh, am I going for seven pairs? Am I going for 13 orphans? Oh, uh, what's my Yakuman gonna be in this game? Meanwhile, like, this is just ignoring the fact that there's also, like, a, a relatively complicated scoring system associated with every single one of these things that you thought I made up, but I assure you is very real. Um, no tinted rocks, dude. It's gonna take some time. Like, here's the thing. You might think, uh, you know, oh, how is that different from chess? Well, like, because chess really only has, like, you just got to learn how nine different pieces move. I'm, you know, it's easy. It's harder to learn than checkers, don't get me wrong. But, like, you know, you got to learn how pawns move. You got to learn how uh, rooks, knights, bishops, kings, and queens move. And then you're good to go. It's not even nine pieces now that I think about it. Because, you know, there's there's... I mean, there's eight pieces on your back row, but there's, you know, three pairs of them. You really only gotta learn how, like, uh, like six pieces move in that whole game. If you wanna learn, like, ta tactics and stuff, yes, but just to win is a, is a relatively simple uh, concept. Mahjong, I'm still trying to figure it out. You can call uh, Chi on somebody. If, if they're on your left and they lay down a tile that would allow you to make a run, you call Chi and then your hand becomes open, but you do have that run set in stone, but then uh, uh, if you could get three of a kind based on the card that they play, you can call pawn, and you don't have to call pawn on them uh, right away, uh, or it just if they're on your left, you can call pawn on anybody, but then what if you get four of a kind? I'm glad you asked. That's what's known as a con, and you don't have to call the con right away. You can, you can chill out on the con. Don't sweat that. Come on. Anyway. Like, I'm having a good time, but I will say, this is the... In chess, I bodied the impossible AI in uh, Clubhouse Games. Because it's, it's not made for people that are, you know, they have a, a background in caring about their chess performance. <laughs> it's made for people who are like, I'm bored, let's play some chess. By the way, I am going to go back for those Eternal Hearts. I'm just trying to see if maybe I could milk one of these, or both of these health downs first. The HP is, is quite precious in date. But, um, after, nope, after bodying, um, the, uh, the impossible chess AI to lose to the normal AI over and over again in, uh, in Mahjong is, uh, is demoralizing. Then again, Mahjong is also like, it's a game of luck, but it's also a game of skill. You gotta make your own luck, like Tiger Woods said. All right. So where are we at on this run? I'm glad you asked. Um, we're we're in a good spot. What we do not want to do is use the sun card. Oh, we already found the secret room, dummy. You don't want to use the sun card for mapping. You want to use the sun card for survival. And if you can do that, the world is is your burrito, dude. Tears up. We, we can't break the the cap, but that's okay. I'm drowsy. Luck up. We have ten luck. So, once we get to the chest, and this, this run is in threat level amber right now. You know, this is like, it's a run where things could go wrong, but I'm, I'm highly optimistic. Um, but, well, why is that amber then instead of green? Because, to be honest with you, most runs that make it this far are already set in stone, and we're just like winding down the clock until we get to the victory. This one, we, we're going to have to put in a little bit of active uh, legwork. But, uh, really, once we get to the chest, I hope that we still have the sun card remaining so we can use it for HP in a pinch. I'm not playing, uh, playing around with that one. We're gonna, we're gonna do everything right, hopefully. And then, oh, it's spirit hearts. The, the most precious resource. And then we should get, uh, a chest, like, literally every room. Our luck stat is so high. I, I don't think we're ever going to be able to use this health down. Like, the thing is, we might be able to, uh... 
you know, get... If we pick up Abaddon or something like that, then it would work. But if we pick up Abaddon, we also have no need for the... For, we have no need for that at all, so... I would rather just kind of play it like this. Anyway, we should be good. We should be good here. Um, that's actually a great card to bring with us. I think the High Priestess is definitely the odd card out here. God, two HP upgrades would hit the spot right now, dude. No. Well, we we could. We don't have to. Well, no, we can't because we'd have to drop one of our other cards by definition to make it work. Okay, that's a good start. Look. We both know what's happening here. If you would just be so kind as to pay out without making me... Well, what do I care if we spend all our money? That's a good point. There you go. No problems. We'll grab it. We'll grab it. And we'll grab it. We got Sun. We got Wheel of Fortune. We're good to go. All right. Now I would say we're in thread level green. <laughs> But anyway, Clubhouse Games, dude, it's a good time. I can't deny it. There are, there are some stinkers in the bundle. And the game is fairly expensive uh, for... I, st I think I still prefer the sun, honestly. The game is fairly expensive. You know, it, you are paying 50 bucks for what amounts to, like, a minigame collection. But simultaneously, it's, like, it's my favorite Switch game right now. This year... I mean, Animal Crossing has it beaten. Even though I haven't played it in a long time. But I... Clubhouse Games is like... This makes no sense. When you hear it, you'll laugh. But it, it would be the perfect game to have during a power outage. Now, your Switch would probably only be able to play it without power for like... I don't know. Maybe a couple of hours before <laughs> needing to recharge. Hey, here. You want to get into a, a, an actually spicy gamer take? I think the Switch is, and I'm saying it, I'm going to say it. I think the Switch is a poorly made piece of hardware. I don't go off like that very often. That doesn't mean by definition that what I'm saying must be true. But, like, I I love the software library on the Switch. And I like the design of the hardware. I, I actually do like being able to, to play it on the go. Not, not like I leave, but, you know, I like being able to take it off the dock and go play in the living room. Um, without having to, like, you know, fiddle around with HDMI cords and, you know... Because I'm moving stuff from my office to the living room. You get the idea. Um, but I... It's maybe the first piece of Nintendo hardware, at least in the past, like, decade or so, where while uh, using it, I'm kind of like... It's, it's kind of like on a manufacturing level, not acceptable. And I say that mostly because of the Joy-Con drift. Like, the Joy-Con drift is is truly terrible. Apparently, if you just use a little rubbing alcohol and you get in... Ooh, and you get into the, the, the Joy-Con, it'll... Uh, it'll sort it out. But I'm also like... Look, I'm not trying to have a galaxy brain take. You shouldn't have to. Oh, and I've said this in the past, and people have hard countered, like, what about the, the Wii U? I'm like, the Wii U, I think, is like the exact opposite. I think in terms of design, that console is not very good, and I bought two of them on launch, so save your anger, please. Um, but we bought our Wii U, and this is just, you know, one sample size, I'll admit. We bought our Wii U in 2012, and we still, like, up until we got a smart TV, which only happened, like, this October. Um, the most recent October, I should say. We still used our Wii U as, like, our TV's Netflix machine, and it worked fine. Like, the screen still worked, the touchscreen was responsive. The console actually, like, boots to the home menu faster than our Xbox One, which also fails to boot to the home menu, like, 50% of the time and requires you to hold the power button down for 10 seconds. Come on. Come on. So I, I actually think, like, the Wii U... I mean, the, the Switch has it beat 10 out of 10 for, like, reasons to buy and also software library. Um... This might hit us, but we're a little too slow to get out of the way. 
But in terms of the actual quality of the build, I feel like uh, I feel like the Switch is kind of a cut below. I mean, I admit it's got a lot of moving parts. You know, you're pulling it out of the dock frequently. Um, you're snapping those Joy Cons in and out. But I am disappointed with the with the quality, just the build quality of the Switch. Okay, I, I, and you know, here's the thing that that might make some people upset. But I think you know it's uh, the the Joy-Con drift problem is such a what, what's wrong with my face? I'm blinking. Um, is is such a like a widespread issue as to like actually be relevant and bring up? I understand if you're a stand for Nintendo, the the Switch is crushing it. I I use the Switch more than any other console for sure. Um, but and and to be completely fair, I bought a uh, my, the Xbox One we have was bought on launch and. Worked pretty well for a bit, but now is basically like just a brick. Um, and the the PS4 that we got shipped was broken at launch, and I had to wait for a, a new one to come in from Sony, which took like six weeks. That being said, since then my PS4 has been good. The Dual Shocks are still crushing it, uh, and you know everything's good in that department. I'm just a little disappointed with the uh, mostly with the Joy-Con quality. How dare you hit me? How dare you break wind before me? I know there's a lot of Nintendo stands out there who will be annoyed with what I just said. Here's the thing. Around the Wii U era, I was much more, I wouldn't say anti-Nintendo, but like, kind of Nintendo indifferent, right? I didn't really care. I mean, again, I bought the Wii U when it came out, but I didn't really care about uh, what they were doing with it for the most part. Uh, it it kind of seemed like they were in a weird spot. I've come around now that the Switch has been crushing it. I just wish I could play Clubhouse games uh, without my controller uh, constantly wanting to uh, go tick, 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 or taking shots for me in Carom. Come on, dude. But these are very, like, impotent takes. I, I definitely understand that. I'm never going to buy your products ever again. That's not true. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get all the consoles at launch, for sure, um, for the for the next generation. Just because, I, 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 honestly, I like playing console games on the show. Especially when my PC was a little bit more garbage. It's just nice to be able to offload uh, the processing power to, like, a different unit, uh, so you can stream it at a slightly higher quality without your PC melting down. Although, instead of your PC melting down, you do have to deal with your PlayStation 4 going... <laughs> trying to run control at like higher than 15 frames per second you could it's actually it sounds like a motorcycle under your desk sorry if I just woke you up there I gotta tell you dude we've been having a lot of 45 minute long Isaac episodes lately I don't know if I did something to create this one but I knew we were gonna make it it was just a matter of uh, of holding down the that sun card until we got here that's 53 wins in a row, boys. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It does help out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I'll be back tomorrow with another Isaac. See you then. See ya.